In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. one God. Amen. Christ is in our midst. He is in our shall be. There's a misconception that the Christian life is supposed to be miserable. Why, if that's not true, if it's a misconception, why would the church ask us to fast and to sacrifice and to deny ourselves the pleasures and the goods of this life? The opposite, actually, is true. True Christianity is light and life. It's sharing in the greatest hope possible. Come to me, all you who are heavy laden and weary, and I will give you rest. These are the words of our Lord, and these are the words of the Christian tradition. So how does this image of Christianity work with fasting? Although we don't use this word often in our conversations, joy is one of the main goals of the gospel message. Jesus came to offer the way to true joy and hope. That's the point of today's gospel reading. The rich man thought he could find joy and fulfillment through the accumulation of material possessions, but he'd forgotten the overarching truth that no matter how much you attain in this life, death will eventually take it all. And so, as we find ourselves in the Nativity Fast, the six weeks leading up to Christmas, we have this gospel lesson today that maps directly onto our current lives. We fast, we pray, we give our time and possessions to those in need with this very parable in mind. Let's remind ourselves of this parable. We hear that a landowner received an unusually large yield from his crops, so much that his barns couldn't hold all of it. And so he decided within himself to tear down his barns and build larger ones. As it would happen, that man died that very night. And we hear from our Lord that he was unprepared for his death. The lesson Christ gives is for us to not hoard our belongings, but that by giving them to the needy, we store up treasures in heaven. And so, as he says, we become wealthy in the things of God. That all sounds well and good, but what does it mean for us? Philanthropy, the spirit of giving, hospitality, these things are all staples of this time of year. Parts of joining in the holiday spirit, right? But, what the, but why does the church emphasize these same things so intensely? The church does this for a reason. To cultivate in our hearts true, unconditional, and unjudgmental love for our fellow humans. We eat less food. We eat fewer elaborate meals. Not because those things are bad, Quite the opposite, actually. Those things are very good, and they are blessed. But in order for us to, in our hearts and in our bodies, identify with those people who have less than us, we, from a position of entitlement and privilege, willingly give up our surplus so that we can, for a time, know what it is like to be hungry to know what it's like to identify with people who have a need that they cannot fulfill themselves, to identify with the least of the brethren, the least of the community. The rich man in the gospel tried to hoard his wealth and build up bigger barns. If you read this story closely, you'll see that he uses the word I six times. He uses the word I six times in this short story. It's only five passage, five verses in the gospel. And he says, talks about himself six times. His focus was on himself and on his wealth. Many of you have heard of Archbishop Anastasios of Albania. He's a wonderful, faithful, inspirational, and a holy man who's worked his whole ministry to, to build up the Christian presence in post-communist Albania. You can imagine the challenge that he's had. As an aside, 
please keep him in your prayers as he's currently in the hospital fighting against COVID-19. And this Archbishop Anastasios, he has a beautiful saying, one of my favorite sayings of all time. He asks the question, what is the opposite of love? What is the opposite of love? Most commonly, the answer is hate. People say hate is the opposite of love. But Archbishop Anastasios changes this narrative, and he says, no, the opposite of love is not hate. The opposite of love is ego. Ego is the opposite of love. Egocentricity, looking out for me at the expense of others, being worried about only myself, this is the opposite of love. So if the opposite of love is ego, then we must do the opposite of the man with the barns. We must not tear down our barns in order to build larger ones, but rather we must tear down the doors of our barns, tear down the dividing walls of hostility between us and others, and open our barns to share with anyone in need the things that we have been blessed with. The Orthodox Church challenges us to fast in order to identify with those who are less fortunate, to fill the stomachs of the hungry and allow our own stomachs to grumble a little bit, to experience hunger, thirst, uncertainty, need. If the opposite of ego is love, then we must forego our own egocentricity and share in the suffering so many people experience. We don't just write a check to charity. We feel in our body the effects of hunger to a safe and small degree. But within this whole context of fasting and sacrifice, we have to remember what I led with. Christianity is not about being miserable. It's not even actually about being hungry, this fasting practice. It's really about putting another person's needs before our own. St. Basil, the great, the amazing philanthropist and bishop of the church, he said famously that the rich exist for the sake of the poor. That is to say that the rich in every society are called to alleviate and ease the suffering and the needs of the poor. Basil continues, the rich exist for the sake of the poor, and the poor exist for the salvation of the rich. For the salvation of the rich. It's through this relationship of those people who have physical needs and others who can satisfy those needs that both physical and spiritual needs are filled. In doing so, we actually do fill up our storehouses. Our spiritual storehouses are full in heaven and become rich with the things of God. If we do this, if we do these things, we will find that the stomachs of the poor are safer storehouses than our barns. Amen.